How's it going guys? Little Regret 265 here, and today I'll be starting a new series called the GT Sport Ultimate Assists Guide. Now it's going to be exactly what it sounds like, a deep dive into how all the assists work on the game in full detail, and how they can be utilized to your benefit in order to lower your lap times, make your gameplay experience more enjoyable, and turn you into a better driver. Today we'll be kicking it off by discussing the driving line assists and the brake indicator, or as I call them, the passive assists. Now I'm going to group all the main GT Sport assists into two categories, being active and passive. What that means is pretty simple, where active assists are going to intervene or change your driving inputs in order to achieve certain outcomes. The passive assists are often going to give you information in order to drive better. Both are going to be very useful and I'll break them down one by one, of course starting with the passives. Now the passive assists are unique in that they don't directly affect your driving in any way, but they affect your driving decisions. I'll just be covering the driving lines and brake indicator for this one, and we'll get to the low fuel indicator in a future video. You're going to have assists like these in just about every racing game nowadays, at least in some kind of driving line format. And with GT Sport, you'll get multiple iterations of the driving line formula that can be pieced together as needed. First, you have the traditional driving line, which shows you the best path to navigate the track under normal circumstances. However, in GT Sport, this is a non-changing line, which means it doesn't change colors or indicate where to slow down or brake at, just the best path around the course. You also have driving markers, which will show you the ideal points to enter, apex, and exit the turns on the track via a light blue fluorescent marker that disappears once you approach it. The brake indicator is simple and effective, giving you a bold, flashing indicator on your heads-up display of when to press the brakes. And co-markers are going to be the last of these assists, and while they are similar to the driving markers, they are my personal favorite since it essentially does it all in one. These give you a physical trackside reference point for where to brake, turn in, apex, and exit your corners. The downside to these is that they can be knocked over by any car on the track, even other players who do not have the assist enabled. Altogether, this category of assist provides a huge bevy of info for the driver to quickly pick up a course's rhythm. Now, all the assists are designed to help you keep your focus when driving, but these assists do it more than any others. Passives are best used in tactical racing situations to maintain the consistency of your driving. They allow you to have very easy to see references at critical moments, so you can focus more on making the perfect overtake or fine tuning your driving to get faster in practice. If you aren't sure of the flow of the track, turn on your cone or driving markers to get some reference points going, and don't be afraid to turn them both on if needed. If you can't reliably find the breaking points for some turns, Try the brake marker as it gives you a pretty safe marker for all corners in just about every car. The driving line is normally best turned on if you need a detailed guide for where the track goes, or when you have a complicated section and the markers simply don't give you enough information. And having them all on at once gives you a lot to work with, but for a few drivers it might be a bit too much information to handle at once. Having these assists genuinely helps you out more than you think it will, even if you've logged hundreds of hours on GT. Trust me. The best way to get faster with this set of assists is to connect the flow of the track and build a basis of consistency. As with anything else, the first step is establishing a good baseline. Find out which combination of the four works best for you and use these visual cues along with anything else you can find to build from that baseline. You can do this by trying to break a split second later or finding a new approach through some corners to find a better line. You can gradually turn off all the assists as you start to remember the whole track and build your confidence, which sometimes allows you to push even further. There is no perfect way to do it, I'm deviating from the lines and markers a little bit myself, but it's all part of the learning process and these can be vital assets to help you find speed and rack up some wins. These can be some of the best assists because you can be just as fast with them as anyone else, whether they use them or not, and they're legal to use in most lobbies and sport mode. I even see lots of people at higher levels of this game using them in some form, usually the markers or the cones, with a lot of success. You don't necessarily have to use them either. It comes down to personal preference and moderating what works for you and what doesn't. I would say that their usefulness in learning a track and building consistency are invaluable though, and that's about going to wrap things up for me. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this shorter piece, and there will definitely be a few more videos in this series coming soon as well. 
Make sure to check those out, and if you want to be notified of the next videos in the series and any further content, don't forget to subscribe and check that bell icon. Until next time, I hope you stay safe, live well, and have an exceptional day. Bye for now.